Welcome to Beyond Our Focus. I'm Steph, and this is Amanda, and this is Breaking Prisms for April 10th. We're going over the Twilight Zone and Black Mirror, and right now, it's just the Twilight Zone, because we're reviewing the second episode of the new Twilight Zone, titled Nightmare at 30,000 Feet, with, I wish we would look up names. What names what? Of the main guy. Adam Scott. Adam Scott. Look at you, look at you with notes and stuff. How fancy, how fancy. <laughs> yes, Adam Scott, which I can't remember what main show he is from because he is from a show. I remember he was from Krampus. Well, yeah, I remember from Krampus he is and from... he uh, was also in Step Brothers as the douchebag brother. Yes, yes. Well, he, he's been, I've seen him in quite a few things, but he's the, our starring character, Justin Sanderson? Yes. So... But anyway, yeah, so we're going to go over the new one. We're going to, real quick summary, it is about Justin Sanderson, uh, investigative reporter. Yes. Flying to, I didn't catch. He I told his girlfriend did. in the beginning, very, very beginning. I but don't, don't remember know. where it was. Overseas somewhere. Yes. Um, and gets on the flight, finds an MP3 player that is saying, hit the plane that he is currently on, it will disappear. And being the investigative journalist that he is, decides he's got to figure out why or what's going on. Goodbye, Pen. <laughs> yes. So, top-level thoughts. Without top spoiling thoughts. anything, top-level thoughts. Very entertaining. Very suspenseful. Like, yes. Uh, they the, the Between the acting and the camera work, everything, it, was, it, just, it kept you like, you want to know. You have to know what's going on. Yeah, the first episode being 55 minutes. This episode was 37 minutes. And I I get why, but I also feel like it... I felt like it could have been a little longer. We could get a little bit longer. I, I agree, but at the same I, I time, it feel, is the Twilight Zone. It is the Twilight Zone. And uh, I feel like, it, for the most part, it did probably play out in real time. Yes. Because he had a... No, it couldn't have played out in real time. No, because it was an hour. He had yeah, an hour. He had an hour. Yeah. So, I don't know. I felt like it could have been just a little longer. I think it could have been more like a 45-minute episode and got just a smidge more out of it. But... It's the Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone was, of course, notorious for full full stories in a short amount of time. I, see, I don't like that. Yeah. that. My issue with some of the episodes of the Twilight Zone, it's like, they just feel so short. It, well, especially some of the stories, like, we needed... More <laughs> time to develop things. But that that is the Twilight Zone. That was the Twilight Zone in 1940-whatever. No, oh my goodness, I'm not saying that is the show. I'm saying that is the Twilight Zone. That is the point of the Twilight Zone, is that it's a cause, a reason for things being so weird and messed up, and sometimes you're just left to wonder. Unless Which, you go to the Twilight Zone yourself. I'm fine with that. I'm just, I'm just saying it could have been a little bit longer. That's all I'm saying. I, I like longer episodes. We, we are way past the days of thing having to be 22 minutes long. What I don't know. Attention span of some people is still like that. Now, again, tell the story you want to tell. I like that both flips were wildly different, and I have no issue if all the rest of them just whatever length they want to be. Yeah. If one wants to be 22 minutes long, okay. I don't know what you're going to tell, but try. And if one wants to be an hour and 27 minutes, I'm also fine with that. So do what you got to do. But as a whole, I think this episode was extraordinarily entertaining. Um, more suspenseful, a lot more suspenseful than the first episode. Yes. First episode was a lot slower, a lot more about the plot and the characters, and this was just about one guy on a plane. Yes. For the most part. One guy on a plane being Scooby-Doo, trying to figure it out. And Scooby-Doo didn't really figure things out. I guess the mystery gang. There you go. <laughs> they did. They tried to. He messed so much. So. He found food. Leave him alone. Very entertaining. Um, even more so than the first episode, in my opinion. Yes. Uh, like I said, very suspenseful, kept you on your toes, kept you wondering, kept you what was going on, and I really enjoyed that. Yes. Uh, but there are some minor plot points and a few little things that we didn't like as well, where the first episode, I truthfully do not have a complaint about the first no, episode. No, as I said, it started, it, it kept its same pace from the beginning to end, so though it was a slow pace, it was meaningful. It had a point from point A to point B all the way through it that just kept the same. Mm. It still gave you things to wonder about, like, what is he going to choose? What is he going to do? And then rounded itself at the end. Yes, yeah, so so. I think the, ep the first episode was really good. It just, 
I get it. This, mean, this it, one was just more eye catching, fair facing, kind of like, oh my goodness. It was more thriller like yes. versus the first one being more of like, more drama like, yeah. I guess. And it just, it was more entertaining to watch as a whole, even though it was a little shorter. Uh, but again, because of this and being fast paced and stuff, it just, it missed a few things which we'll touch on in the spoiler section. So, how would you rate it? How. Where are companion cubes staying at this point? Some things better than the first episode, some things worse than the first episode. To which I will say, we're gonna, I'm gonna put it again personally at a solid four. I think a good four companion cubes were saved yes. in this episode. I think that we, we did lose one because of certain things, but overall, I, I, I liked it. I, I just enjoyed it. So, all right, well, we're gonna give you about five seconds. Until we jump into spoilers, so if you want to leave and you don't want to hear spoilers, if you're here, you probably watched the episode. I don't know why you would do it if you didn't watch the episode, but now the ending, everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should have, I mean, if you're still here, you'd also know that's not true, because... Yeah. Yeah, if you're still here, that, that okay, definitely did not happen. No, that didn't happen no, at all. But that, that is happened. the, like, the typical, atypical thing to yeah. say. Uh, everyone like, dies, everyone dies. Say, like, five seconds... If you're still here when that ends, we're telling you. We're telling you the ending. Exactly. And then, whoop. Even though we're not. No. Uh, so, let's break down this a little bit more. Pros and cons. One of the biggest pros about this episode, in my opinion, and one of my favorite things they did about this episode was the podcast. Yes. It was a very... The, the, the tool that they used to make the story go further, to move it along and just bring the entire thing together was that podcast. Yes, I mean, it was the whole point of everything, but I loved it playing throughout the whole thing. Yes. It wasn't like a narration, I mean, it was, but it wasn't a narration of the character or um, Jordan Peele or anything. It was the podcast, him keep going back to it. What's going to happen? How is it going to happen? And this just telling everything. And I personally love podcasts anyway. <laughs> so listening, like watching a Twilight episode listening to a podcast yeah. was very interesting and very entertaining and it moved the plot along and kept you informed kind of what was going on the whole time. I also like that he, he kind of fought with the podcast in a way. In a way like where it's like you listen to it, okay this is weird. You listen to it again after a pause, like it doesn't just keep going while he's doing things sometimes but it's like and then you hear it again and you're like nope and you throw it away. Yep. And you're like ah. Oh, and it was Talk good that it. we only ever heard it when he heard it. Yes. So it wasn't something that was playing most of the time that we just kept getting weird updates. It was, he was listening to it, so we were hearing it. So yes. we would know, and we were as lost as he was through the whole episode. Even though we still predicted the ending, which is one of the yes. issues that had it. The only one of the issues with it is unfortunately kind of like the first episode, same with this episode. The ending's a little predictable. Well, yeah. And any kind of... I can see the future or something is telling me the future and you something bad's going to happen that any kind of plot line like that usually ends with someone trying to save the world and them being the cause of said Yes, prophecy. it happens often, unfortunately. Yes. And unfortunately, that's the only downside so far of the first two episodes and both of them have been fairly predictable. And that's, I want, if you're going to do it, give me a better twist. Give me something I'm not expecting yes. to some degree. I feel like um, Black Mirror does that a whole lot better. Yes. Yes, it does. They're really good about, you just, you really don't know where it's going to end. <laughs> no. It has very good twist points. Like, you, you're starting to think one way and then bam. Yeah. So, unfortunately, this not quite, but still super entertaining. Yeah. Again, I thought it was better than the first episode as far as just entertainment wise, just period. Um. The act he, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, so. the acting was great from everybody. Like him especially. I mean, he, of course, was the star. So he kind of had to carry everything. Yeah, <laughs> but I, still, like the camera angles they used, every like just the emotion poured into it was great. And all the other people, were their acting was great too. Like, everything was good. Joe with an E was good. <laughs> yes. We got him immediately. Um, they didn't focus on a lot of people. We kept focusing on the flight attendants mm -hmm. a lot. And the pilot, I knew the pilot. I can't think, I know. I've seen him in yeah. things, so I knew him. Um, so, yeah. Um, like anything else? For me, as far as acting-wise, the only acting I did not care for was the ending. As far as yes. the whole, everyone just going towards Justin, and they all look zombie-ish. They're all doing the chanting, it's your fault, it's your fault. And yeah. then the beat down, and it's just... 
Yeah, it would have worked better if it didn't quite work that way. I love the, the ending after the crash, him waking up on the beach. You don't know what he, yes. what's going on. Magically, the MP3 is right beside him. It's Still there, alive. of course, alive. And Suddenly there's a part two. There's a part two saying, oh, everybody from the plane miraculously lived and was found. Except one, Justin Sanderson. And it's like, crap. Something's going to happen to this guy. Yeah. Where's everybody else? And then immediately, oh, there's everybody else. Yeah. My first instinct was, oh, the boat left without him. <laughs> but no, no, no. It, it's just that he is the reason why. Um, major, major pro of the episode, though. I loved how Jordan Peele slipped in his first narration. Because it caught me off guard. We had to play it how many well, times? We, we hear the, the podcast first. Yes. And as soon as the podcast go, go is done... How he starts it, he's doing it over the intercom. Yeah. And he starts it with... Pretty much like, this is your 13-hour flight. Exactly. So it sounds like it's just a normal flight attendant saying something, and then you pan around, and he's on all the television yeah, screens. I, I, next thing you know is, and Justin Anderson, and you're like, why isn't this character like looking around like, who, me? And it's like, no, it's just, oh, it's the narration starting. Uh, because this one gives us narration, not at the beginning, but it waits about 10 minutes into the episode, then gives us the narration of kind of what's going on, what's happening. Unlike the original one, which was pretty much always right at the beginning. It kind of sets it up and closes it. Where this one gives you, lets you see the character for a second, then kind of tells you kind of what's happening, and then the very end gives you the closing is. So yeah, good job. I, I like the creative marks right there. I like Jordan Peele, period. Again, I liked his first movie. Us, really enjoyed have issues with it. It could have. It would have been made a cool Twilight Zone episode. And so far, these two first episodes are good. And I like him as the guy. The guy. The guy. Uh, the guy giving us this narration. Giving us, we keep seeing, I like how they slip him in. I like what he's doing. I still miss the other guy's voice, though. Well, because he had the iconic know, voice. I mean, it's still. perfect. And you, you won't get that again. I know. So, but Jordan Peele does a great job, period. Yes. So solidly... We only lost one companion cube over pretty much predictability and minor acting points. Yes, if, yes. Um, maybe a rushed ending. I'd be curious if we get an episode that is five. Or if we get an episode that's like a one or two. I'm curious if it's going to get really bad. Or, I mean, so far I think it's it's at a steady pace. Yeah. Almost an upward pace. The first half of this episode, I would have given a five. Oh, yeah. A solid five. I'm like, this is excellent. This is great. But the longer it went on, there were a few little things here, and the predictable ending kind of set it down a little bit. But overall, really fantastic. Like you said, four out of five companion cubes. Yes. Saved. Any final thoughts before we close on out? Yes. If you ever run into a podcast that is trying to tell you the future, tell someone else. Oh, that was our <laughs> other issue with it right there, is that his inability to try to get anyone else on the plane to listen to this, this He tried podcast. one person and was... I don't want to get lice. And then, okay, bro, we're good. This freaky guy who just apparently could not put headphones on. I feel bad for that guy. But, yes, his inability to try to get anyone else to hear what he was hearing. Only other downfall. Lost our companion cube over it. Yeah, yeah. So, that's it, though. Yeah, still, great episode. Highly recommend. Yeah. Definitely go into episode two. Uh, and if you haven't watched episode one, I still highly recommend episode one. They're both fantastic. So, as always, you can reach me at Stars on Travel. You can reach the show at Beyond Door Focus. You can reach Amanda at KZ Pup. You can... I, I'm completely out of order because of the burp and things happened. It was bad. Um, so, yeah. Show at Beyond Door Focus. Everywhere. YouTube. Podcast services around the Zigaloob. Maybe. Maybe. But, I think, uh, anything else? That's it. Yep. Till next time, I'll figure out this ending one day. Long days and pleasant nights. <laughs>